Well, hello everybody and welcome back to my latest video, how to customize WP GraphQL cache keys. Now, as we all know, caching is important in optimizing performance for headless WordPress setups. The WP GraphQL Smart Cache plugin helps manage caching for GraphQL queries, ensuring faster response times. Now, in this video guide, I'm going to walk you through setting up your WordPress environment installing the necessary plugins, and customizing GraphQL cache keys to better suit your specific needs. So let's dive right in. To start off, let's check off prerequisites that you're gonna need to follow along in this video. The first thing I have is a WordPress install and server all up and running. I'm using WP Engine's local, which is a local free development server that you can spin up WordPress with. Or you can also create a free headless WordPress WP Engine platform account as well. And then I have a plugin that I is needed for this video, which is WP GraphQL right here. And then we have WP GraphQL Smart Cache. And this is all we need, as well as a knowledge of your browser's dev tools. Now, WP GraphQL Smart Cache automatically tags cached responses with keys derived from the GraphQL queries. And these keys are linked to specific WordPress data like post, page, or taxonomies. So when relevant data is updated, the associated cache is invalidated. So for example, a query that retrieves posts with specific categories and tags will generate cache keys like list post or list category and list tag. Now, if any of these categories or tags are updated, the entire cache is invalidated, ensuring the data stays current. Now, in addition to the list type name keys, individual node IDs are also included. And these individual IDs are used to purge cache when updates or deletes happen. Now, the list type name is used to purge when a new thing is published. So for example, list post will be purged when a new post is published, but Purge post one would be purged when post one is updated or deleted. Let's go ahead and see this in action. I'm gonna jump back to my WP admin and I'm going to go ahead and open up my graphical IDE drawer and I've already created a post here. So this is querying for all the post, their title and their URI. Okay, so when I press play in my IDE, this will make a query against my site's WP GraphQL endpoint. So let's. So let's open up the dev tools so we can see the headers when we make the query. So I'm gonna command option I because I am using Chrome dev tools. Now when I press play, it'll make that query and there's the index.php GraphQL file. Now if I scroll down over to the Gra X GraphQL keys, let's go over this. Here we see the X GraphQL keys header with a list of keys. Now, if this query were made via a GET request to a site hosted on a host that supports it, the response would be cached and tagged with these keys. Now, for this particular query, we see the following keys. Now, there's the hash of the query right here. Now, this is the unique identifier, which is in this example, this long string for this specific query made. Now it ensures that the exact same query returns the same cache response unless invalidated. Then we have the operation type that follows, which is GraphQL query right here. And this indicates that the operation is a GraphQL query as opposed to a mutation or subscription. Next we have the operation name, which is get post. Whoops, let me highlight that. Whoops, <laughs> get post, there you got it, stoked. <laughs> Identifies the specifically named query in this case, which is get post, which helps in targeting this operation for caching or invalidation. Next is the list key, which is list post in this case here. Now this key identifies that the query is fetching a list of post. Any changes to the list of posts would trigger cache invalidation. And then lastly, we have right here, this weird looking thing, the node ID. Now this represents the specific node 
and in this case it's a post that was resolved in the query. Changes to this node will invalidate the cache for this query. So if a purge event for one of those tags is triggered, the document will be tagged with these keys and purged from the cache. The next thing that we want to do is understand cache invalidation with WP GraphQL Smart Cache. Now caching is the or one of the hardest things in software engineering and web development as we all know and naming things as well. But with WP GraphQL Smart Cache, it optimizes caching by sending the keys and the headers, but the caching client like Varnish or Lightspeed, it needs to use those keys to tag cache. So WP GraphQL Smart Cache itself does not tag the cache document. It provides the caching client information, which are the keys to tag the cached document with. Now, a supported host like WP Engine works with WP GraphQL Smart Cache out of the box. So let's discuss this invalidation here, as you see with these slides. Now, there's various events in WordPress, such as publishing, updating, or deleting content. And this triggers cache invalidation or purge based on these events. So let's break these down. So the publish events is when a new post or content type is published, the cache for the entire list associated with that content, like example, all post is purged. Now this ensures that any queries fetching this list will be up to date. Now update events, uh, which is like purge node ID, this is when an existing post or content type is updated. Now the cache for that specific node, which is like a single post, for example, is purged. This allows the updated content to be fetched without affecting the entire list. Now, next is delete events. And similarly, when a post or content type is deleted, the cache for that specific node is purged. And this ensures that the deleted content is no longer served from the cache. Uh, this matters because these targeted cache invalidations help maintain the balance between performance and data freshness. By only purging the cache when necessary and only for the relevant data, WP GraphQL Smart Cache ensures that users re receive up-to-date content without necessary, uh, sorry, unnecessary cache purges, which can negatively impact performance. This invalidation strategy is crucial for optimizing the performance of headless WordPress setups using WP GraphQL, especially in dynamic environments where content changes quite frequently. Now that we've explored how cached documents are tagged and how cache invalidation works in WP GraphQL Smart Cache, let's see how these concepts interact. When a GraphQL query is executed, specific cache keys, which are tags, are associated with the cached response. These tags correspond to the data queried, such as posts, categories, or specific node IDs. The cache invalidation strategy then ensures that when relevant data changes occur in WordPress, the associated cached documents are purged based on these tags. So an example is invalidation scenarios for a get post query, for example, we have publishing a new post. So when a new post is published, the entire list of posts in the cache is invalidated. This ensures that the new post will appear in any subsequent queries that fetch this list. Second, updating or deleting a specific node. If the, for example, hello world post with the ID CG9ZDDOX is updated or deleted, the cache for the specific node is purged. This allows the updated or deleted content to be accurately reflected in any future queries. Now, thirdly, manually purging cache. Clicking purge cache in GraphQL uh, settings cache page triggers a manual cache purge for all queries. This can be useful when you want to ensure that all cache data is refreshed regardless of specific events. Uh, and then in fourth example, so operation name or the query hash based purge. So custom purge events can be manually triggered based on the operation name, for example, get post or the hash of the query. So this level of control allows you to finally tune when and how caches are invalidated. These strategies work together to ensure that the cache is only invalidated when necessary, providing up-to-date data without unnecessary performance overhead. 
For instance, when the Hello World post is updated, it's reasonable to expect that the cache for the get posts query should be purged so that any queries return the most current data. Now this fine-grained control over cache invalidation ensures that your headless WordPress site remains performant while delivering fresh content. Back in the WP admin backend, and let's discuss why would we need to customize WP GraphQL cache keys. Well, in some scenarios, the default caching behavior might be way too broad, right? Leading to frequent cache invalidations. And this is especially true for more complex queries. So, for example, if your query includes categories and tags, any update to these taxonomies will invalidate the cache, even if those changes don't affect the specific post you're querying. Customizing cache keys allow you to fine tune this behavior, now ensuring that only relevant updates trigger cache invalidation and thereby improving some performance. So let's look at an example query. So let me go to a graphical IDE, pull it down the drawer here, and I have a query in here, and this query essentially as I scroll down it's long and it retrieves a lot of posts along with all the categories and tags and when this query is executed the response includes the posts categories and tags that match the query so let's take a look at this so when I execute this okay and then I'm gonna command option I to open the dev tools up let's run it again to get the GraphQL name here and then look at our keys and you can see right here that it grabs all the category and list tag and list post now this cache document is tagged with all these and this means that the cache will be invalidated whenever there's a change in any of these entities whether it's a new post category or tag while this behavior ensures that your cache is up to date it can lead to excessive cache invalidation and we don't want that. So another example is if a new tag is created and assigned to a post not included in this query, it will still trigger a purge invalidating the cache for this query for list tag. So this means that the cache could be cleared more often than you really want for your specific use case, which could negatively impact your performance. Now, as you might think, the problem is that the list category and list tag keys could cause this document to be purged more frequently than you might like. So WP GraphQL tracks precisely, but it doesn't know your specific intent and what you care about, right? So you might simply not care if this particular query is fresh when terms change, or you might only care for this query to be fresh when terms change. WP GraphQL doesn't know the intent of the query, only what the query is. So fortunately, you can customize the cache keys to, be, to better suit your specific needs, reducing unnecessary cache invalidations and improving performance. I've set up my code editor here, and let's talk about customizing cache keys. Now, by doing this uh, customization, we can ensure that the cache is only invalidated when changes that you believe are relevant to your use case could occur. And this involves fine tuning the tags associated with your queries, allow allowing you to maintain optimal performance without sacrificing data accuracy. There's a couple of ways to do this. You can do this by navigating to your WP admin and modifying the functions.php file in the theme file editor page. But in this video, I'm just going to create a actual plugin, which is another way you can do it off my code editor um, into the zip file. So this is a code snippet um, that Jason Ball wrote. And let's go over what's going on here. So uh, right here, we're using the add filter hook to hook into the GraphQL query analyzer GraphQL que uh, keys. Now this filter lets us modify the smart cache keys used by WP GraphQL. 
The function we're hooking is defined inline, which means we're using an anonymous function here. Now this function will receive five parameters. Uh, it's going to receive GraphQL keys, return keys, skipped return keys, and skipped keys array. Now in this line, we're converting the return keys string into an array. We use PHP's explode function, splitting the string by spaces. And this allows us to manipulate individual keys more easily. And then here we're checking the keys array is uh, if it's empty or if it doesn't contain the specific operation we're targeting, which is get posts with categories and tags. Now, if either of those conditions is true, we return the original GraphQL keys without making any changes. This ensures that our modifications only apply to the relevant query. Now in these lines, we're searching for the key list tag within our keys array. If it's found, array search will return its position. Then using the unset function, we remove this key from this array. This line is part of our strategy to fine tune the cache keys for a specific query. Now we do a similar operation here for the key list category. We use an array search to find this key and unset to remove it. Now by removing these specific keys, we're altering how our WP GraphQL handles caching for our target query, potentially optimizing performance or altering data retrieval. Then finally down here, we're going to uh, filter out the keys we don't want. We convert our array back into a string using implode. And this time we use spaces to join the keys together, just like the original format. And this reassembled string is then assigned back to the GraphQL keys under the keys index. And finally, return the modified GraphQL keys. We also specify the priority of the filter as 10 and indicate the function accepts five arguments. This final step ensures that our customized cache keys are now in effect for the specified query operation. So now let's go and give this a try. Now I'm back in my WP admin here and I have the uh, custom extension that we made with the PHP file to extend the filter smart cache keys. Let's go ahead and test this in the browser. So I've got my graphical IDE and I've already created the query here with the um, exact operator name that we had in our code, which is get post with categories and tags. So let's go ahead and open up the dev tools here and run this query against our endpoint. There it is. Now, if we go down to the response headers and the GraphQL keys, let's make sure it just has the uh, p list post. Yep, stoked, we got it. Now, publishing new categories and tags, which triggers purge list category and purge list tag will not purge this document. We're getting the benefits of cached GraphQL documents and the document is valid invalidated when the post is updated or deleted just the post, but we're letting the cache remain cached when categories or tags are created. All right, y'all. Now we hope you have a better understanding of using filters as demonstrated in this video to customize cache tagging and invalidation strategy to better suit your project's specific needs. Now, taking control of how cache keys are managed you can optimize performance and reduce unnecessary cache invalidations. As always, we look forward to hearing your feedback, thoughts, and projects. So hit us up in our headless discord and I'll leave all the links necessary in the YouTube description. And until next time, y'all, happy headless WordPress coding.